Hi everybody, I've got an odd one for you today. And speaking of odd, today's video is sponsored by the Ancient Language Institute, ALI. You can hit ancientlanguage.com to learn more about their offerings. I'm currently taking a Latin intensive this summer with them and I'll be continuing my Latin education with them. I'm a language teacher and I have been vlogging through my experience with this class on this channel. So just one more of the many things I do on this busy, distracted channel. Uh, don't forget, like the video, subscribe if you dig what I'm doing, press the bell button, and comment below. I, I do this for the conversations. In fact, speaking of conversations, do join my Discord. We talk pipe smoking, we talk languages, we talk about whatever it is that strikes our fancy. So the link to the Discord is below. Well, sin mas, let's go ahead and get to it. Joffrey the Giant learns Latin like a bula. Doink. Latin is the language of the enemy. Okay, and this is an article written by Giles Fraser, a journalist, broadcaster, and rector at the, at the South London Church of St. Mary's in Newington. Okay. So a reporter and a rector. And before I get into, I'm going to describe this article before I read some bits of it. Probably most of it is extremely short and it's not an article. It's a little opinion piece. Uh, this, this picture is a picture of Boris Johnson, currently prime minister. And uh, he is famously a defender of classical education. He went to Eton. Uh, he has been attacked uh, because of that. This is him in 2007. Uh, defending the preservation of uh, classical education, of ancient history specifically. And he apparently delivered a speech in Latin at the time, uh, although I have not been able to find any video of that. So he has this new program where he's instituting Latin education across several schools. He's allotting four billion, four million pounds to the effort, which is nothing, right? That'll get swallowed up. Uh, just like that but it's a it's a it's an it's a true effort it's enough to make it a, a true effort and that's being debated hotly right now youtube is full of videos of uh, boris johnson uh speaking latin or ancient greek um and and you can tell it's kind of stumbly uh it's you know he's a politician uh not a scholar but he has been an avid defender of classical education with all of its complications uh, in, uh, in, in British, in the British context. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and zoom in on this a little bit and have a read. So this is Giles Fraser speaking. Having been a dyslex dyslexic child with slap happy teachers, I learned to despise Latin. So immediately we're going to this, uh, public school, right? Private school, uh, vision of getting smacked with a ruler or a paddle. Uh, because you suck. I can still remember the lick of that long ruler far more clearly than I can the apparently sweet taste of Horace or Livy. Amo amas amat amamus amatis amant ad nauseum. Love had nothing to do with it. Whack if you got it wrong. Whack if you weren't concentrating. From the age of seven onwards, Latin was the reason my prep school marked us with red lines on the back of our legs in order, socially, to mark us out as different from the plebs. A chew. <coughs> Oh, God bless me. Mm. Okay. So this paragraph sort of sets the stage. This is a weird piece that will absolutely give you whiplash. After reading it, I think one, one feels the flow of it. Uh, but in a way, I almost wish this had been way longer to smooth out and flesh out a lot of what happens here. It gives you whiplash. He purposely doesn't really know what you want you to know what he thinks for a little while, uh, but it's such a short piece that the effect is really just jarring. Uh, but this marks us out as different from the plebs. That is a line that has been trotted out and people attacking the idea of bringing Latin education to government schools where it just hasn't been available up till now. And it's part of a greater uh, education reform effort that Johnson is undertaking. Now, Boris, good old Boris, 
who is learning his Latin at a prep school just up the road from mine, has decided that everyone should know what the word pleb means. He has earmarked four million pounds for Latin teaching in state schools. Leveling up, Boris calls it. And it's part of a bigger program he has for leveling up. You all know my opinion of government schools, so you know, whatever. Cynics, however, might question whether this is little more than some cultural war distraction from a general asset stripping of the humanities, with our university arts subjects, for instance, facing a devastating 50% cut in funding. One of the things I absolutely love as uh, someone who loves creative writing, um, I love to write poetry, I'm married to an artist. Okay? Um, I, I mean, I, I, sh I shouldn't list all my, my, my credentials, but I, mean, I was a, 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 on the board of a theater company, et cetera. Like we're just, we're into the arts. I absolutely am cynically delighted anytime people in the humanities and the arts fight over money being given to some other field in the humanities or the arts, saying that their area is more important. Really what the fight is, is about what you value in education. That's what it ought to be. And any time there's a move to valuing the, you know, generally speaking, the right things, you should, one, one would think there would be happiness, but no. A paltry four million pounds hardly disguises the continual shift in education away from cultural subjects towards market useful STEM subjects. Okay, and then he makes a terrible joke that I'm not gonna read. Now, I really should be passionately against all this Latin revivalism, however modest. Not only was Latin the language of regular childhood thrashings and adult life, it has become for me a kind of shorthand for the crucifixion of Jesus. Okay, this is where it gets weird, and I'm taking you along for the ride. Christianity began life as a small offshoot of Judaism, persecuted by Roman imperialism. In first century Palestine, Latin was the language of the oppressor, and it was the Romans that crucified him. Perhaps uh, you're enjoying thinking about Monty Python right now, as well as having profound theological thoughts. Grab hold of both of those trains of thought. The whole logic of the Roman world order was to destroy everyone and everything that posed a threat to its totalizing rule. That's an important line. Render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God's is not some clever compromise division of all that there is into earthly and heavenly. All things belong to God without remainder, and crucifixion was a Roman signature punishment designed to terrorize those who defied their he hegemony. With crucifixion, and then he quotes N.T. Wright, the symbol which has spoken of Caesar's naked might now spoke of God's naked love. Amo amas amat meant something very different now. Um, too clever by half, but whatever. Of course, all this came to be obscured when the Latin world hijacked his religion, making Rome itself the capital of Western Christianity. So he, he's not Roman Catholic, obviously, he's an Anglican. Jerome translated the Bible into Latin, and so the language that may have been used by Roman soldiers as they poked him with their spears and taunted him with insults, or at least the language they took their orders in, became the official language of the faith itself. The Roman Catholic Church, otherwise known as the Latin Church, buried all this. Originally, at least, Latin was the language of the enemy. So what he means by buried all of this is that they sort of glossed over the fact that the, the Roman Empire had been the oppressor of of Christianity. So given that I harbor theological instincts that would make Ian Paisley blush, how come I think Boris is really onto something with this whole Latin experiment? So he approves, okay? He finally lets you know he approves. Because primarily it represents a small move against the thoroughly depressing idea that education exists simply to serve the needs of the employers. Okay. Now I work for a classical education company and we have cautiously consciously worked to have an excellent STEM program because it is something that can be kind of left behind in classical education and ought not to be, right? We want to value the humanities um, without devaluing the hard sciences and math, okay? Um, and we do believe that theology and philosophy are the royalty of, of education. You know, and math and biology are just for our philosophy. Anywho, utility is a terrible reason to seek an education. It does not, that does not make you human. And so here's his most important line, in my opinion. What I like about Latin is precisely its relative uselessness, the very thing that its opponents also point to as a reason not to like it.
Shouldn't we be learning Mandarin or Spanish, they argue, useful subjects, ones that will help us negotiate new trade deals and induct us into the up-and-coming language of global power? Now, remember, he started this talking about, you know, about plebs, because the accusation has been Latin is a class-dividing subject. Uh, and Johnson's move here to, to make Latin more broadly available in government schools has been framed as an effort to, to diminish that effect, right, to make Latin available to all. I know that there are those who insist that Latin is, after all, terribly useful, being the root of so many other languages useful for doctors, etc. But that misses the point. I would never endorse, like, the arguments to study Latin that hinge on utility are easily assailed. Latin is a great language to learn how to think. It's a great language to feed you good vocabulary to do better in your English tests when you're in high school. But a lot of languages do that. And, you know, learning any second language will, will change your mind. Um, it'll, it'll have a transformative effect on your brain, on your soul, on your spirit. Uh, and Latin is, is, is unique, as every other language is, is unique, and you have its particular effects. We have a history with Latin in the West, uh, but the utility end of things, you know, Spanish way beats out Latin. Not only do you get the linguistic benefits, and you can argue about who, which one gives greater benefits that way, there is, in fact, a benefit that comes into using it in the community, into being uh, in, in international business and shoot in this country now, the second largest Spanish speaking country of the world, local and regional business. Anyway, as the Bishop of Worcester recently pointed out, education is like friendship, something that is valuable in and of itself and not for what else can be gained by it. Because education is about making you as a human being. Education that is designed to meet some specific economic end is not education, but training. The instrumentalization of something that should be loved for its own sake. Latin is perfectly suited for this end. Even more surprising, and then he talks about how he sympathizes with the, with the, the Roman Catholics who were recently barred from, from doing, um, having services in Latin. Yes, of course, good and brave men died to give us religion in the vernacular. William, Tyn William Tyndale was burned at the stake for daring to translate the Bible into English. I am delighted that within a few years of his martyrdom, the English Bible was officially sanctioned by church and state. We can talk a little bit about the history of the Vulgate here as well. But the culture war of the Reformation is over. No one is forcing us to worship in Latin anymore. That fight has been well and truly won. And, you know, I, I know that's a weird perspective that he doesn't really prepare us for, uh, for some of us. Um, I mean, I am a Reformed Christian. Uh, and unlike some of my brothers, I do, I do actually believe that that particular battle is done. Latin, then, has always been the location of culture wars, and I have many reasons to hate it. But these days, I f no longer feel the need to repeat that old schoolboy dictum. Latin is a language as a dead. L Latin is a language as a dead. Yeah, okay, there's a typo in there. Messing up my rhythm. Latin is a language as dead as dead can be. It killed the ancient Romans and now is killing me. Latin stands out in the modern curriculum, not as a marker of social privilege, nor as a language of imperial authority, but as a refusal to allow education to be co-opted by market-obsessed Philistinism. That's actually the most important line. <laughs> That's the line I was expecting to read. We've been better, better prepared for it here. Okay, so let me read that again. Latin stands out in the modern curriculum, not as a marker of social privilege, nor as a language of imperial authority, but as a refusal to allow education to be co-opted by market-obsessed Philistinism. Defending Latin because Latin, the, the only good reasons for studying Latin truly are the reasons of joy. That means we, we can defend all good education by defending Latin. It's a good hill to fight from. Some languages are all the better for being dead. Woe just drops that. Uh, having worked in a field uh, that was very closely tied to language preservation, um, that would set a lot of people's hair on fire, which is why, notwithstanding the memory of all those lines on the back of my legs, I, I too hope that my children will one day learn the language of what I used to call the enemy. Okay. 
biz it, it, it's bizarre but i wanted i wanted to do something based on this on this piece the reason it's bizarre is that he just says so many things that need to be fleshed out like this you know the whiplash effect even in this paragraph right at the end there's a whiplash effect he says apparently contradictory things whatever having fun with it so i do want to talk about a couple of things uh in this article besides the comments that that i've made so far like why am i studying latin as i am vlogging through you know, my, my latin journey and i only have one more class left in in my summer intensive <sighs> i minimally edit my videos so that whole pause is going to be in there um I'm not learning Latin for its usefulness. Now, so I teach English as a second language. That was what most of my career was. I have also taught Spanish and Portuguese, and I'm currently a Spanish teacher. But because I'm in the classical educational world, I would like to add the ability to be a Spanish teacher to a Latin teacher to my quiver. But that's not my primary motivation. My primary motivation is the joy of learning Latin, even though I find what Latin poetry I've read, mostly in translation, to be crass. I don't admire the Roman sense of humor. My Latin book, which is an excellent uh, immersive sort of book, all in Latin, Familia Romana, is a constant reminder of the fact that the Roman Empire was, for a long period, the commonly accepted number is one-third slaves. One-third slaves. Theirs was an iron boot. As I study Latin, I'm kind of reminded of that all the time. As elegant as Latin can be the vocabulary particularly is just as frequently a reminder that like like all human societies it was obsessed with power but but roman society more than many the systems of patronage that you see being combated in the new testament right and there you know the romans weren't alone in that but they they took it to a whole other level and i would say like reverse um you know as present as that may have been in hellenic society uh, the romans had their own much stronger version of that and they stuffed that into hellenic society uh under the under the empire the christian faith is the religion the famous quote is the religion of women and slaves. And I'm proud of that. I think that's awesome. So in a sense, and I think this is some of what Giles was, was getting at here in, this, in a very undeveloped embryonic way. Um, Latin is the language of the slaves. That's why I'm learning it. I wanna, I wanna learn the language of the slaves so that I can have a connection to the early church uh, i mean greek would also have an awesome effect that way uh, but you know i i am proudly um maybe my <laughs> i mean i've got a whole lot of russian jew in me i've got i've got everything uh, but i'm, I'm proudly culturally anglo-saxon because of my mother who grew up in peru but was <laughs> you know very you know she went she went to a british school in in lima and, you know, so for me, my childhood was King Arthur and was Lord of the Rings. Um, and I love that. And I love that before the Anglo-Saxons came, there was Roman Britain. And I'm, and I'm fascinated by that. And I love that, that that's a part of, of, of the stream through which I identify myself, controversial phrase, uh, but, you know, I'm not interested in learning 
Latin for patrician reasons, perhaps for patris patristic reasons, but not for patrician reasons. If you read the City of God, for example, you can see how the Roman mode of thinking is being broken. And that's one of the most appealing things about studying Latin for me is to be able to be in that and see that happening. Um, I do not find Roman culture and Roman history to be savory. I, 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 I see it as mildly disgusting. And when I'm reading or watching videos on the history of the wars with the Germans and the wars with the Gauls, I, I'm never cheering for the Romans, you know, and I know that there are a lot of people who, who, who do like they, they, they dig everything the Roman empire did and everything the Roman empire brought. And I do believe that in God's providence, they were a great blessing to the world, but not because they wanted to be, they blessed the world by accident because they sought to dominate it. And I just can't, I can't dig that. I can't get behind that. Maybe part of that is just natural underdog preference. You know, I can never cheer for Barcelona or Real Madrid. I'm just not going to do it. I'm not going to cheer for Manchester United. Not going to happen. Uh, so maybe maybe some of that's going into, but you know, I, I, that's, <laughs> that's pretty legitimate. Anyway, um, and so it's kind of interesting to think about how this effort in the British schools is sort of, at least it's being couched in terms that make it about um, empowering the underdog, right? not using private Latin education as a way of, you know, I can use these as markers because I know these phrases or whatever. This is a marker that sets me in a certain class and we're going to keep the other class away. Uh, I want, I suppose, to study Latin to see the small become great, to see the destruction of the Roman classes in a sense, I want to study Latin for the democracy of it, for the Christianization of it. And I'm studying the classical pronunciation because I want to be there where it starts as best I can. So I'm going to end this video with a, a little clip from a talk uh, Boris Johnson gave. What did the Romans do to democracy, my friends? <laughs> what did they do? They abolished it in favor of a dictatorship and then the imperial system. And why were the Romans not much good at drama? Why weren't they much interested in drama, whether tragic or comic? Because fundamentally, the whole audience was forever being dragged off to another entertainment, the games, and watching people and animals being slaughtered in a depraved ritual that was endemic in the Roman world and virtually absent for, from Greece. How many people died in that, that building that is emblematic still of Roman culture and civilization, the, Col the Colosseum. How many people were killed in it? Probably 200,000. The Greeks liked the happy release of the theater. The Roman idea of good family entertainment was cutting the feet off some poor thief, coating his stumps with honey and letting the bears do the rest. I'm afraid that in many ways the Romans were bastards. <laughs> So whipped and brutalized as children that they like to inflict pain themselves. What's the most famous image uh, from all the frescoes of Pompeii? It's at, it's at one of the, the women whipping each other. Uh, what happens in Plautus and Terrace instead of jokes? People are hauled off to be flogged. It was a society not based on democracy, but on fear. All right, y'all. There you have it. Right bastards. And I am into it. The peace of Christ be upon you. Aí sim é um homem de verdade, não é esses troços do grupo não, essas carcaças velhas, o UOL, fim de carreira. Cadê você, profeta, autarquia? Hein? Pedrada no inferno, fala comigo aí, matador de demônio. Hein?